Hey guys, are you able to hear us? If you can hear my voice, can you type B, B, E, E in the chat, all right? Because today we are in the B Rich platform. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Oh, everything is good. Hi, good to see every single one of you, all right? Can't wait. I can see Brandon is here. I can see, oh, some of you are like, like in number, I don't know who. Yeah, uh, how, about, how about, how uh, about, how come you have so many comments? I don't, I don't have so many comments. Like you have a lot of comments. Oh, you have to open the B app. Ah, open the B app. Okay, yeah. so for those who are still watching. Oh, okay, 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 good, good, good. good. I can, okay, I can, I can hear myself as well. So for those who are still watching, uh, yeah, you can directly use, use the B app. And then in fact, you can even ask us questions here so that we can see you as well. So along the way, okay, this is a very bonus special uh, Q&A session, all right? Uh, for those who are graduated from OMI, maybe you can type OMI in the chat, all right? But even though you are not an OMI graduate, don't worry, we can, we will really make it as simple as possible. We will actually explain some basic concepts of options as well. And for those who have already graduated from OMI, in fact, we will also go deeper into certain OMI strategies so that we can answer uh, some of your burning questions, right? Especially how to invest in this volatile period of time. So I can see everyone is here, B. So, uh, okay, some people are from OMI. Good to see every single one of you. Now I'm going to share my slides. And if you can see my slides, please let me know. Okay, I'm just going to adjust this to smaller. All right, can you guys see my slides? If you can see it, can you type S in the chat? S stands for slides. All right. So together, together with me today, I have this amazing investor and his name is Safe Investor. In fact, he's all the way from Taiwan and just nice. He's in Singapore and that's why we are doing this special webinar Q&A together. Uh, he's a very strong options investor. So that's why later on, he have a lot of things that he's going to share together with all of us. All right. So yes, everybody can see. Now, Safe Investor, are you ready? Can uh, let's, go. let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So everybody can see, right? So today it's going to be a one hour special segment. So feel free to ask us any questions uh, along the way and just put it in the chat so that we can all see. Okay. I can see like I think 300 of you watching right now. So let's go. Okay. Now, what will be covered tonight is going to be super amazing. So this slide is I prepared together with the Safe Investor. So Safe Investor, can you share with us exactly what are we going to cover tonight? Okay, so for those who are excited, type E in the chat. If you feel excited, if you want to learn something, type E in the chat. Type E in the chat if you want to learn something tonight. Because I actually prepared this slide and um, there's a lot of bonuses to give out yeah. to all of my students and you will actually benefit a lot from it. Okay, so let's get started. So I see some ease. Good, good, good. Okay, let's get started. Uh, number one, we'll, cover, we'll go through some option basics. Number two, we'll go through the original four OMI strategies. So if you haven't joined OMI, definitely, definitely check out OMI. Um, for all online for old all my students i'll go through the four strategies again so you can have a, a bit of review and see what's going on and lastly I, i'll introduce vix because vix is super duper powerful combined with options you can actually hedge and make a lot of money with vix okay let's get yep. started and then on top of that okay because there are also some beginners here so mm -hmm. we just want to cover some basics about options mm -hmm. who who here is beginners that you you uh you have very like that you're very new if i'm very new can you type new in the chat all right so that we can see if all, all of you are already experienced probably we can go through this very quickly but if you're beginners maybe we just spend a little bit of time to explain to those uh who are very new so that everybody can learn together so if you're new please type new in the chat all right so in the first place okay for those who are not sure what are options basically it's just a contract right but this contract is super powerful if you know how to use this contract to your advantage actually you can profit a lot more compared to buying and holding on to stocks all right new to options mm. okay darren is new brandon is new as well okay so let's really go through what is the basic of our options basically uh it's you think about it as in terms of contract so can everybody type contract in the chat so there are two type of options all right one is call options one is put options so the safe investor can you share with us as a buyer all right let's look at the top hand corner right which is mm -hmm. the the buyer side so can you share with us exactly what is buyer of call options first? okay cool cool so let's go into the copy so today we won't go into the sell option uh, the, the sell part we'll go into the top part which is right here okay so guys so remember when we're buying options it we're buying a contract we're buying contract is saying that when you buy a call option it means that you have the right to buy a hundred shares 
at the predetermined price. So that that is your right. When you buy that contract, when you buy the contract, let's say if you buy uh, Apple stocks and the strike price is at 100, right? you, it actually means that you can buy 100 shares of Apple at $100 regardless of the market condition moving up or down before the expiration date. Now, what does a buy put mean? A buy put can be used to lock in your selling price. So going back to the very, very fundamentals of option, if you want to buy something and you know you don't have enough money, you want you can lock it in with a call option. If you want to sell something and you're not sure if the market is going to go down or go up, you can lock in your selling price with the put option. Okay, so let's go uh, go uh, look through, uh, look through some examples. Oh, no example. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah no, I took Apple. I took out the Apple slide. So okay, maybe, okay maybe I can explain uh, more in terms of a uh, very layman context. For example, let's talk about uh, like uh, how many of you own a property. All right, if you own a property before, can you type uh, pro P in the chat? P stands for property. All right. So in the past, okay, people instead of buying and selling the property right away. Way because property actually involves a lot of cash, right? So instead of buying and selling the property, some people actually make a lot of money mm. buying and selling a contract to purchase a property. And then actually, eventually, they actually get this contract in their hand, they get it at a low price, and eventually, when the property keep on appreciating in prices, the contract worth more value, all right? And they actually sell away the contract at a profit. So the same concept goes to options as well, right? Just now, what I'm using the property contract context is the core option right because when you lock in the purchase price of the stock you can buy it like for example right now apple uh is about hundred dollars right apple is about hundred dollars so how many of you believe that believe that in the long term when apple continue to make more money all right the stock price of apple will increase okay if you believe so can you type i in the chat i sense of increase right because historically okay maybe i, I show a screen uh like a share screen Hold on, I want to. Oh, someone I, saying that or. or yeah, yeah, thing. it's okay, but I'm going to show another thing. So let's say L A P L stock price, yeah. right? So, uh, all right. So let's just do five years, all right? So I'm just going to share screen on the chart of Apple right now so that you can see. So plus. Hold on, give me a while. It's the first time I'm using this very amazing tool called OBS. And I think it's very robust, but I need to find where is the place that allow me to find my Apple share screen. Where is it? Oh my God. <laughs> it's so yeah, Sorry guys, let's have a look. Server? Uh, no. It's, it has to be like Chrome or something. Chrome? Okay, there's no Chrome here. Uh, okay, why not I take a screenshot? Maybe we'll just share. Okay, good idea, good idea. Yeah. Okay, genius. Okay, I'm just going to take a screenshot of Apple stock price inside the slides right now. Okay, hold on. I'm going to paste it here. And pam pam. Okay, there you go. Okay. I think people are able to see, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we need to go back to okay, the full I'm, screen. I'm just going to full screen this. How about now? Okay, there's a delay. We should be able to... Yeah, I, I think, yeah. Okay, okay. so... Uh, you can see that actually uh, how many of you believe that it will increase okay so some people believe that long term okay if people continue to buy buy Apple products when the company make more money actually historically it's like that when the company perform even better over time when they make more money actually the uh, because the revenue everything continue to increase that's where more people believe that this company is going to do even better and that's why they start purchasing the stocks right and that's how the stock price will also increase over time and that's why you can see that actually Apple share price for the past five years actually increased by I think close to 285 percent right? I'm just going to make myself smaller and you can see right so it has been increasing so if you believe that in the long term uh, Apple share price is going to continue to increase that's what you can do right now instead of buying the shares outright which you're gonna spend quite a lot of money let's say if you want to buy 100 shares but right? if you want to buy 100 shares you need about thirteen thousand dollars but if you buy a call option that is just a fraction of the price and let's uh, it's usually about 10 to 15 percent in right now it's about 15 15% of, of the of uh, of $13,000 so you instead of $13,000 you only spend like 15% of it and you lock in the current share price of uh, of Apple at about $130 so eventually when they continue to increase you actually make money because your core option right now will be worth a lot of money so that is the concept of core options right the reverse will be if you think that Apple share price is going to drop in the future right rather than short selling the stocks we can which can be very 
dangerous, you can actually buy a put option to lock in the sell price of, uh, of Apple right now at $138. Let's say if it dropped to zero, you can still sell at $138 and that's how you make money as well by buying a put options. So that's the basic concept of uh, options. And I think right now, let's go through some OMI strategies because I believe majority of the students here are in fact OMI graduates, right? So uh, the first strategy, in fact, it's it also has to do with uh, the questions brought about by our followers, okay? We actually throw in this uh, Google form to ask you to fill up your questions. So both Ken and I tonight will try to address as many questions as possible. We have prepared the slides. Uh, and along the way, if you have any additional questions, just drop it in the chat so that we can uh, really keep this going. So actually the first two questions are from Kevin and Eddie. All right, so Kevin, she, he is asking how to recover sell put that drop a lot in price. Okay, so Kevin, are you here? If you are here, can you type uh, me in the chat, all right, so that we can answer your question directly. And Eddie, if you are here, can maybe you can type me as well. So Eddie is asking how to recover from a BOSS strategy that if the stock price drop 50% and the company that he's talking about is Meta, which is Facebook. So maybe Ken, uh, you can share with us a quick recap of what is BOSS option strategy about. Okay, so guys, so now let's go back to very basic, right? BOS means that you want to sell a put. You want to sell a put and you want to collect a premium. So you can see this red line over here. It means that you kind of don't want the stock price to go uh, below that red line. But you know, because of the market crash, it actually went below. Okay, so let me tell you how Warren Buffett actually does this sell put strategy. So guys, so before you do the sell push strategy, you have to make sure that it is a company or something that you want to own, right? So as an OMI, you know that you must have the cash, okay? You don't do the sell put if you don't have the cash. You must have the cash before you do the sell put, okay? So now if this this goes below this 50, you know, drop 50%, right? Now Warren Buffett, whenever he does the sell put strategy, he wants to collect the real shares. Okay? He wants to collect the real shares. So, you know, you can see his Coca-Cola, it means that let's say the stock price is at $50, he sells a put at $30, and if the Coca-Cola drops, drops to 20 and $10, he still is willing to buy it at $20, right? The strike price. So this is a fundamental uh, mindset that you should have. You should always look at valuation. Is it undervalued? Is it something you want to own? Is it um, is it something that um, that you are willing to hold for a long term? Okay. So if you don't want to, if that's not what you want want to hold for long term, don't do the sell put. Okay. Don't do the sell put. Okay. Now there is one uh, there is one strategy that I can use. It's called a rollover. Um, do you want to explain that? Uh, I mean, like you can, you okay, can explain. Okay. But before we before we explain the rollover thing, right? Uh, let's say if if we go back to Eddie's question, so um, maybe for people who are also watching, what do you think about Facebook or Meta as a company? Is this a good company? Is it still a good company despite of the stock price dropping? Or you think that actually it's not a good company? If you think it's good, can you type good in the chat? If you think that it's a bad business, can you type bad in the chat? Uh, and if you think about it, um. Actually, to me, I think Meta is still a very strong company because um, it's one of the most precise marketing platform that uh, organizations, that companies can reach out and to get more new clients, right? And in fact, for our company, we also spend a lot of money on advertisement and the, the place that we send the most money because it's most effective is still Facebook. So you ask yourself, right? Let, let's say by uh, at that time when you sell a put on Facebook, which is you promise to buy 100 shares, maybe at back then 300 over dollars, is this undervalued already? If it's already undervalued and if the price keep dropping, uh, I understand that it can be very painful, but you need to ask yourself if it's undervalued and if you give yourself a longer horizon investing time frame, will the stock recover? If it can, because it's still a good company, then I think there's nothing much to worry about. However, if you feel that right now, maybe your portfolio allocation in terms of Facebook, it's too big that uh, because of the drop right now, you just feel like, like your portfolio is being heavily affected, then maybe you can consider selling some of the shares away. You don't have to sell 100, 100 shares everything because you have 100 shares, you can choose to sell part of it. And that's how you can kind of recoup back some of the cash and you use the remaining cash to buy something that it's 
uh, some to you that is really undervalued and has high growth potential, which I think Facebook right now is a really good valuation right now. Uh, what do you okay, think? Okay, so let me. Uh, so I just look at Kevin Eddie's question. So. Eddie and Kevin, if you're here, let me let me address the question again. So what I'm thinking in my mind is that maybe you actually caught the shares. So you sold a put and you caught the shares and then it continued to drop more. Is that, I mean, yeah, maybe I, that's one of you trying to ask, right? So going back to the basics, right? You want to make sure that, okay, so for number one, you, you made the premium, right? You made the premium right there. So you, you made some additional money. It's just like your, your stock is actually, you know, it dropped 50%. So you, you, I mean, if you if you have, you have to have conviction in the in the company that you're you're selling puts on, mm. okay. Now now if you're if you're doing a weekly put, there is like a rollover, which yeah. is like you can close the original put mm. and then open a new sell put. Mm. Okay, so basically you <clears throat> you close your sell put and then you roll it over to the next week. It's called L R O S. It's the new, um, it, <clears throat> it's an old strategy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's how you can, if you want to repair, you can keep on rolling down, right? And that's how, yeah, and over time, actually, this strategy has also been proven effective because as you keep on rolling over, you have, you make money from your extrinsic value, which is your time value, right? So, so over time, you kind of lower down your, your purchase price of Facebook in this case, right? Meta in this case, all right? So uh, let's continue with... Um, Another question, all okay. right? So, Sharpen is saying that if the recession is expected to last for 18 months, uh, buying call or BOSS option strategy by selling put seems risky. How do we optimize options in such market condition? And uh, in fact, uh, another student also, okay, but maybe before we address more questions, um, what's your view on okay. recessions that's going to last okay. for 18 months? <laughs> I think... I think recently you actually listened to a podcast and you said the average recession is like in the bear market is about nine months. Nine months. months. It's nine months, about right? Nine Usually months. about yeah. nine months. We're almost, we're almost there. Almost there. Almost mm-hmm. reaching the average of the bear of the bear bear market. Okay. So now if the re, uh, if the recession keeps mm-hmm. on going, right? So now, guys, if you really roll, because we're combining value investing with options together, right? So you want to think about when the price goes lower and lower and lower, your call option actually becomes cheaper cheaper and cheaper okay so now before we go into options right originally let's say you have the s p 500 that's you have qq right when it drops lower and lower lower and we think about stocks what would you want to do like for example right and when it's expensive you have to pay four hundred dollars for one spy now but like as it gets lower cheaper and cheaper right you can you only need to pay you know 350 300 maybe even 200 for one just one share of the S&P 500. Now, when you apply that method into options, right, you think about it, the, are the stocks or the ETFs something that you really want to own? So let's say originally your one call option of Apple costs you like $2,000, right? But then as the Apple mm-hmm. share price decreases and decreases, your call option contract price will also decrease and decrease. So, so for example, originally one call option will cost you $2,000. But right now, because the price is so cheap, the Apple price came all the way down. So one call option only cost you a thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. So so really, it's all about that thinking about that the long term and value investing um, mindset right there. Same thing with selling puts, right? When you really want to own something, it's, it's actually actually when the price gets cheaper and cheaper your risk becomes lower, lower and lower, and lower. lower. because your sell put yeah. you sell the below strike price right originally you, the strike price could be twenty dollars but the, because the stock pr- crashed so your strike price comes down to like ten dollars so even in cash yeah. shares it's actually lower risk yeah right? and i think like i think after investing for so long i just really think about investing is about risk management especially guys okay if you think about it nobody can time the market right it's impossible to know when will the recession end so so instead of trying to time the market i think the more effective way of investing is really start investing when the valuation is good price to buy right for example right now i know it's bear market a lot of people may think that it's very scary but research and statistics have shown that so many millionaires in fact a lot more millionaires are created during a bear market right because when everything becomes so cheap and those who people who took action during bear market that's when the, the when the 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 v that where the recovery it can it can it can be a v-shape or can 
be a longer time, you know, like who knows, right? But then when the recovery happens, that's when their wealth multiplied multiple times because they, they, they bought it at a really, really cheap price. So I think instead of trying to think that how long is the bear market going to last, it can be nine months on average or can be even 18 months because you know, historically there are also times that recession can last for a long time. But if you just continue to invest, uh, I think that is a much better strategy than trying to time the market. How many of you agree with that? If you agree, can you type A in the chat, right? Because for the past five years, if you just keep on, uh, like, okay, let's not talk about five years. Five years can be a little bit too short, right? You think about 10 years, 10 years in terms of investing horizon. For the past 10 years, there are crises happen, right? Even the COVID crisis or the recent recession as well. But the market has also gone up close to 200%, right? Since 10 years ago. So your wealth has been increasing right like despite the fact that you go through multiple recessions throughout that 10 year period yeah so that's my my take on that that's how like what can say if you do it at the right valuation the risk is already super super like control and minimize yeah let me add yeah. a, a true story to that so so guys who does crypto investing here if you do crypto type c in the chat i'll tell you a true story about crypto <laughs> type c in the chat if you do crypto investing like Ethereum, whatever, Solana, Nana, all that stuff. Okay, so now, so, because I actually got, recently got into NFTs, right? Now, I didn't touch NFT before was because usually NFTs are calculated on Ethereum price, right? So one NFT can be 0.1 Ethereum or, or totally one Ethereum, right? So, but now, because of the Ethereum crash right now, the, the Ethereum came all the way down, it crashed so much. So I was like, holy shit, like, even though the NFT price was a 0.1 or 0.001 Ethereum, I look at the Ethereum price and you know you convert that to US dollars, the entire NFT becomes super cheap. And as Ethereum comes more and more down, I just kept on buying and buying and buying because like I can feel like let's say originally I had to pay for example a thousand maybe a thousand dollar for some Ethereum like 0.1 Ethereum, but right now 0.1 Ethereum only cost me five hundred dollars. Mm. So I'm like, holy shit, this is cheap. <laughs> This is so cheap, like, you know, because I, I know it's a good NFT project. So I'm buying good NFT projects when the Ethereum is crashing down. So that's, that is value investing. That's mm. value investing. Yeah. yeah, I think the whole concept is about value investing. You buy things that you think is valuable when the price is cheap, right? And right now, the, in fact, the bear market is really giving us a lot of opportunities. Now, let's continue. Some mm. additional questions. Uh, Jason is saying that, no, uh, what if you no know, he does the Paracupa strategy, which is an option strategy for those who have not watched it? Maybe you can just Google uh, uh, YouTube Paracupa and you will see one of my investing mentor Sean. He actually did a video on this strategy, right? So, but uh, because recent price drop, and that's why options also drop as well, and that's more than fifty percent. And Fiance is asking that buying a long call options when the market is uncertain. Uh, do we do that? Uh, we are not sure. Okay, once again, how long will the bear market last? And uh, due to time decay. So so what's your view on uh, doing buying call options during this volatile period of time? All right, so let me answer this first. So let's go, uh, maybe Fiona. Okay, so <coughs> now options, you do have time decay. There's there's no, you know, there's definitely, so that's why we, you know, even OMI, you always say buy the longest one or very, very long one, right? So, okay, so now, you know, you can't do anything about the, the time decay, but well, well, number one, going back to the basics, like because the call option is actually pretty cheap now, you can, okay, so now, don't do this unless you understand what I'm trying to say. So originally, let's say if you you buy one or two shares, right? You can, you buy one share when it's like 400, you buy two shares when it's 300, and you buy five shares when it's, the price is 100. So you lower down your average buying price with, with stocks, right? Mm -hmm. You can, one share 500, two shares 400, you buy five shares at 200. You lower, you lower your buying cost. Mm -hmm. You can do the same thing with options, okay? But, but you have to understand what you're doing, okay? You have to have strong conviction. It means that, let's say you buy one call option at $400, and then somehow the, the stock market crashed down to $200, and you have strong conviction, you're supposed to, you should probably buy two call options at $200, okay? And this will probably, you, have, you know, if, if you don't understand it, don't do it. Okay, don't do it. Otherwise, you will lose more money. But you have to have strong conviction. Otherwise, you can what you can actually do is because the price is so cheap. At that time, at this time, when you sell a put option, right, you collect the premium because the price is cheap. Your your risk is actually lower, so you can actually keep on selling put option to kind of repair uh, your your losses. 
Mm. Um, par coupa, if it drops below 50%, now, I do share this in my own group coaching called you know, value trading. I won't go in depth, but what you can do is you can actually, you know, okay, so let's say if you can't hold it, you cut loss, right? You cut loss, but at the same time, you feel like, oh, the, the market is so cheap. What can I do with this money? With that money, you can buy QQQ call. Okay, so basically you're, you're, you're selling away your SPOI call and you're trading it for a QQQ call. And why you're doing that is because we know that the QQQ will go up faster than the SPY. So basically you're trading a lower volatility call option onto a higher volatility call option. And you know when it goes back up, you know that the QQQ will go up much faster than the SPY call. So there are, there are a few strategies that you can kind of move around. Because investing is all about money mm. and money in different forms and in different forms that have different volatility mm. so you know like i don't know if you're my, in my group coaching or not if you're in my group coaching you'll understand sometimes when you talk about full portfolio management it's all about increasing and decreasing your volatility in the market i i totally agree but then uh for those who don't really understand but basically he's talking about value trading the kind of concept right i think okay let's keep it simple first so for example like fiona is asking do we buy long call options when the market is uncertain now let me just uh um okay so uh buying a call option what does that mean is you remember the property context right like, like you kind of lock in the purchase price of the property right now with a small amount of money right instead of buying the full property using like a lot of cash you're paying like maybe just 10 percent to 15 percent of the price to lock in the property price right at let's say a million dollar right and eventually even though the property increased to two million dollar because you have this contract you can still buy a million dollar right and that's why this contract is now worth a lot of money now the same concept when it comes to buying a call option right i want to lock in the price of uh in this case for example s p 100 i want to lock in at 380 dollars because i believe that long term the stock price is going to increase to 400 500 dollars and that's why i lock in right now and that's how when the stock price really increased my call option is going to be worth a lot of money and that's that's how i can make money by selling it away away so i just want to once again use uh historical data to show uh my my point of view when it comes to investing during this volatile market like guys if you were to count how many times did the market touch the ema 200 for the past, uh, from since 2014 all the way until now, it's close to 10 years, right? Close to 10 years, guys. How many times did we actually manage to touch a 200 EMA? Red one. Yeah, which is the red line, okay? you If you count, which I already gave you the answer, right? Because there are four arrows that I draw out. There are only four times. Guys, out of this 10 years period, that we only have four chances that we managed to get a bear market that touched the 200 EMA and then what happened is when it touched after that it start to rebound right so you can see that one of the uh, one of the more recent touch was uh, before the, the recent bear market was back in 2020 COVID right that was a touch and then in fact it dropped down a little bit more but that is when it really tests you as a com conviction as an investor if you believe you are long-term optimistic about the economic outlook and you're long-term optimistic about human you know us wanting to evolve us wanting to improve then isn't it the best time to actually start investing right during this period of time and if you are somebody completely new that means you're uh, you have not even started investing using options I think this is the best time right because you finally get this chance that you manage to touch your 200 EMA again and what's likely going to follow is a bear market will end everything will come to an end right even a bull market comes to an end that's why we have a bear market right now but when a bear market comes to an end that's when the bull market return right if you can buy it right now your acceleration using call options which is strategy x it's going to be super accelerated right but having said that if you already have certain positions in let's say paragraph or buying call options on s p 500 and it's in losses uh my personal advice is depending on the duration of your call option if you still have let's say one year or, or two years ahead i think there's nothing to worry about because you have time right but let's say your contract duration is going to expire in the next two months or so then i would say that if you still have bullets you can choose to re 
reinitiate another contract, right? But once again, it depends on how many bullets do you have. If you still have money, I would say that um, this is the best time to add some more. But then if you already have a huge allocation in S&P 500 using call option, I would suggest now wait a little bit because you already have a lot of positions. I would say wait until at least your 20 EMA cross back your 50 EMA, which we taught in the OMI class, right? For those who have uh, under, uh, attended OMI, you understand what am I saying, right? At least that is the first sign of bullishness. And you want to, if you want to be more confirmed, then you want to wait your 50 to cross back your 200. That's when the bull market return, right? So that's how if you have existing position, that's how you can uh, play it even safer. But you have no position. I think this is the safest time to start investing. Okay. Yeah, that's my take yeah. on this. Okay. Let me add yeah. something. So guys, so remember when we do investing, everything, anything has to be done before it happens. So for example, you have to, let's say you have to get in the market before it goes up. You have to kind of hedge or get out of the market before it comes down. So if you have a losing position right now, Okay, my straight opinion is like, it's in the past. You can't do anything. You can't fix it. There, there is almost no way to fix something that's already gone and done in the past. You also have to think about what's gonna happen next. So if you think about it's gonna crash, then maybe buy a put option. If you think it's gonna go up, right? And you, according to the chart, maybe, maybe, okay, just maybe buy a call option, right? You, you have to always think about what's gonna happen in the future. Anything, everything that's done, it's in the past. You can't go and fix it. You can't. There is no way to fix it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I think we have uh, kind of covered quite a lot on, on that. Okay. Now, some people are also asking how to profit from a bear market, right? Douglas is also saying, oh, is it suitable to buy put on SPY right now in this bearish market? So let's explain what is buying put options first. Maybe Ken, you can uh, explain okay, one okay. more time. So, so guys, so remember, uh, when we buy a call option, we lock in the buying price, right? You have the money and then you don't have the shares, you lock in the buying price. When you buy a put option, okay, going back to mindset, it means that hypothetically you have the shares you want to lock in your selling price, okay? So for me as a safe investor, I kind of don't buy puts to make money. I buy puts to protect. Let's say I have 100 shares of SPY and I feel like this is a clear downtrend, right? I buy an insurance with a put option mm -hmm. to lock in my selling price. That's how I kind of protect myself um, in, in the market, in, in a downtrend. Yeah. yeah. So basically, you you when when how 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 does buying put make money is when the stock price drop. That's when your your insurance starts to kick in, right? It's just like uh, when you buy normal health insurance, and when you get sick, that's how the insurance pay out to you. The same concept is when the market gets sick, that's when the insurance pay you because you buy the insurance on the market, right? So, uh, is it a good time to buy put? Well, actually, if you look at it, it, it is indeed on the downtrend, right? So remember during OMI we talk about if you want to buy insurance which is buying a put option you want to you can buy it during a downtrend of course but you want to buy at which one support or resistance can you guys type down for me if you want to buy a put option when should you do it support or resistance right and if you check back the chart right now we are kind of in the middle of uh, support and resistance, we are in the middle. So definitely this is not the best time to buy a put yet. But if you want to uh, buy a put later on, you want to make sure when the, when at least when the stock price go back to the resistance, which is downtrend resistance, and then you buy a put for it, for it to have a higher probability of dropping back to the support, right? And that's how you profit from your put option. Uh, but once again, in our OMI, we also shared about you don't buy put if you have a smaller portfolio, right? Because um, buying buying put is just like buying insurance. You if you are you are not very well to do, I don't know, uh how should I say that? Yeah, oh when when your when your portfolio is not big enough, then there's no no point to buy insurance, right? Because there's nothing much for you to really want to protect, right? Because your portfolio size, small portfolio size is already in. And, and and insurance itself, right? You do not have a huge capital to 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 be risking in the first place. So only for those who have bigger portfolio, like in my opinion, six figure or more, I think it makes sense to buy put option as a form of insurance, but not a form of bet, right? So that's very important. Mm. Now the next uh, questions from Alvina. She's saying that uh, the price of my sell call options are much higher compared to the current market price and mostly expiring, what can be done or just wait out? Okay. 
Oh, wow. Actually, yeah. So she sell a long call. No, she did X plus. Hey, Alvina, are you here? I think you're my coaching student, right? If you're here, can you type here? Because <laughs> I, I, I kind of remember the name. I think you're my coaching student. Okay, if you're here, can you type here? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, while waiting for Alvina, some people are asking, if we wait for the 20 to cross above 50, we will have chance of miss the low price, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's why I say if you have multiple bullets to shoot, you can consider shooting one right now. And then uh, at least you don't miss out the, the low, right? But once again, uh, it depends on whether your risk appetite as well, because right now, when you enter options, the risk is slightly low, a uh, higher because it's on a downtrend. But once again, if you look at the chart, actually right now it's a very safe time because finally you managed to touch your two hundred EMA. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure Alvina okay. is here yeah, or not. not. Okay. Mm. So guys, so what she's saying is that when you do X plus strategy, sometimes like you know in a bear market, the price can come all the way down. And you, when you could originally the X plus strategy is you wanna you want the market to go. You want the market to go kind of kind of flat, kind of go sideways. You want to buy a long call option at the bottom, keep on selling your call options for you to collect the premium. But sometimes because the market it comes all the way all the way down, and when you because it's so below, it means that you won't be able to sell a call option to collect the premium. Mm. Okay, so now how do you solve this problem? You there there are two ways you can solve it. So whenever the price rebounds back to the to the resistance level you sell a call option okay whenever it rebounds back to the resistance level you, you sell a call option okay so now the first that's the first way to repair it the second way is like what i mentioned before you treat it as a uh, you look at the, the call option and you're going back to your value investing concept is it a good time to buy another long call option or even buy two long call options okay well depending on your risk tolerance level right you, you want average cost down uh, average down the cost the third way is to sell let's say right now you think that the price is going horizontal sell your weekly put options to collect the premium to recover your losses so that those are the three ways to recover the losses but on, and again like it all goes back to how good your technical analysis is mm. and how good is are your valuation skills Mm, yeah. yeah. So so if you <clears throat> think that some of you are also wondering if your ex is losing money, is it possible to do anything? Well, just like what Ken was explaining just now, you can consider selling uh weekly, monthly calls. Yeah. No no no, no. weekly, monthly call. You have already uh, buy call, right? Yeah. You have already buy call that you can sell a weekly or monthly sell call uh, at the resistance so that you kind of recoup back some of your uh, premium for your strategy X but of course once again there is also risk doing that because you are already in the losses right your strategy X is already in loss when you sell call uh, kind of also below your original buy strike price of your strategy X when the stock price spike up that's where uh, you have to really your, your strategy X will not be making money in fact you will have to close it at a loss so once again it's a it's a it's in the past it, you can't yeah, fix it <laughs> yeah it's a coin it's a two side of the coin you have to decide what do you want now another student is asking Ravin Kran is uh, asking that uh, how to use VIX to implement option strategy better and I think this one Ken is really good at it so right now I'm just going to let Ken to invite uh, invite him to explain what is VIX okay so okay so we have a lot of questions yeah. uh, maybe we can answer them at the end yeah so guys okay now you have to, if you as an options trader you have to understand VIX okay so now if you think the market is volatile now type V in the chat you think it's volatile type V in the chat Okay, you think it's like it's very, very safe type S in the chat. Okay, mm -hmm. so now VIX is a super, super powerful tool. Very, okay, so I see some people type V, right? So now how do you really, really determine if the market is volatile or not? You look at the VIX. Okay, so let me explain. The VIX means we generally, the nickname is called the fear indicator. Whenever you see the VIX spike up, this means that people are super fearful when people are super fearful they buy a lot of put options a lot of call options and you do a lot of crazy selling a lot of crazy trading so that's why the vix spikes up you can see le the left side over here you can see a huge huge spike vix went up to went up so crazy that was during the COVID time when people were buying puts buying calls doing buying and selling at that time okay now then you can see small spikes over here in the middle, there are small spikes over here. Now, as you can, <coughs> excuse me, 
Yeah. Just recover from COVID. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, when there, whenever there is a big spike, you correspond to the S and P five hundred. The S and P five hundred is always in a drop. Okay, it's always in a drop. Right, you can see right here. Uh, you, from the left, there is a drop over here, two drops over here, and you can see that right now. Um, you can see the VIX is reaching. Uh, you can actually, you can actually draw support and resistance on the VIX. So, how do you really kind of okay? Not it's not hundred percent, but kind of time the market, kind of time the bottom is looking at the VIX support. Okay, can I draw? Yeah, yeah. Okay, draw. so so guys, you can see right here. Yeah, you will, uh, yeah, ah, okay, yeah, so yeah. you can see that this is 30, okay? It's around 30 right here. So whenever the VIX touches 30... I can help. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, there you go. Whenever the VIX touches 30, you can see a small dip and then it goes back up. Small dip, it goes back up. Same thing over here, small dip and it goes back up. Okay, so same thing. Now, recently, it touched 30 again and you can see it didn't break the 30 line over here. So this, uh, and also according to 200 EMA, that will actually be a very, very good time to buy. It's super mm. good time to buy. Okay, mm. so now, so now, if you, if you think the, the support and resistance is clear, can you type C in the chat? If you think it's clear. If you think it's not clear, just type NC means for not clear. Okay, I'll show you guys more. While waiting, uh, yeah, Venus is explaining uh, VIX in Chinese means Kong Huang Zhi Shu. Ah, thanks yeah, so much. Yeah. Yeah. The fear so index. people think that it's uh, not, not clear. clear. Ah, okay, 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 guys, okay. Uh, let me show you the magic, okay? This is the beauty of you know, technical analysis. And okay, so some of you are in my group coaching, so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so now you can see whenever this VIX, can you see there is a what? There is a support and resistance line right here. So it touches over here and it touches over here. And look, it means that when it comes down, it means that people are too happy. When people are too happy, the market is about to drop again. So you can see when it comes all the way down here, right? It's corresponding is right here, mm -hmm. right before the drop. Same thing over here. This is when people are too happy right over here. It's at the peak and right before the drop and same thing you can see okay so let me show you same thing recently you can see this is a support line right here it means people are too happy and this was right before the drop okay so how can you use this right you can use it to you know before the drop you buy some insurance it's as simple as that for buying insurance you can sell a call option you can buy a put option or you can sell away your stock right so so guys okay so who wants to, who, who thinks it's clear? Type C if you think it's clear enough. If you think it's n still not clear, type NC. Type NC in the chat. Okay, any other questions? Um, no, they're, they're, all, they're typing, they're typing. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay, so Venus thing is clear. clear, okay. It's okay. clearer, right? Ah, okay, yeah. okay. Need okay, time. need time to digest this phase. Uh, you can okay. watch the replay. Uh, yeah. Later on, the replay will also be available as well. Okay. okay. So, See, so, so people think that it's clearer, clearer. Okay. it's clearer. All right, yeah. okay, let me show you let me make it more clear let me make it more clear okay so you draw three lines okay draw three lines okay so as you can see right here right you can see right here at this bottom right here this means that this means that everyone is so happy is super duper happy and you know in la la land in la la land i mean <laughs> this is what one book said right you we want to be uh fearful when everyone's greedy and want to be greedy when other people are fearful so this is why the VIX is so important. So you can see whenever it touches this part, even here, this would actually be a good time maybe to sell a call option or buy a put option right here, or you know sell away your stocks or do some hedging strategies right here. The same thing over here, touches, this was actually right before the crash. It was touching this support line right here. And if you had seen that, you bought a put option, you sell your call option, you sold away your stocks or do some hedging strategies, then you would actually avoided this huge, huge bear market right now. Okay, so so that's how you use the VIX, and you can see right now, VIX is like kind of touching, kind of touching a uh, a, a support level right here, just kind of. Um, but this one you have to zoom in and out to, to to check, right? So last time it touched, right? Last time it touched it and it came crashing down. This time it's touching again. Will it come crashing down? Maybe yes, maybe no. Who knows, right? Who knows? You have to you have to zoom in. Okay, this I talk more in depth in my group coaching. 
Okay, but somehow I also feel like sometimes it may not be suitable for everyone because like for example, I, I don't personally use VIX uh, to analyze because I, I would just think, oh, like for example, like during this period of time when the market keep on going up, right? Actually, the VIX has been happy all the time, right? Yeah. But then the market has, has gone up for, like, for a couple of months, right? So I think at the end of the day, you really have to find a style that's suitable for yourself. I think right, like during this period of time, I think what is scary is actually it's the valuation. It's the valuation that keep on going up and, 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 and that actually eventually caused the market to drop. But then VIX is just using as an additional boost for for people who are very sharp in TA, for example, uh, Ken is very good in TA. He he can he can time it better. So for me, I seldom use it, but but I think for those who find it useful, make sure you you start using it as well. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, okay, uh, TA is all about pattern. So do you want to explain a little bit more oh, about this? Yeah. Okay. So guys, so there's actually a book called I forgot. Okay. So if you go and read out there, there are tons of books about technical analysis. There is one book that I read that said that why technical analysis work and why technical analysis doesn't work. It says that it works because um, when we're trading in the market, you are part of the market as well. Everyone's part of the market. And he says that using technical analysis has actually considered everything including financial reports, including recession, including oil prices, whatever. So he said that because all of us are in here and technical analysis is based on stochast uh, statistics and for some reason it will always repeat the pattern. For example, a diagonal channel, horizontal diagonal support, stochastic, RSI, uh, MACD, Bollinger Bands, you can see there will be patterns that's gonna keep on appearing and appearing. And for, as if you, if you wanna be a trader, and if you want to learn learn about options, you have to be good at TA, right? You have to understand um, when to get in and when to get out. Okay, so so TA is more about patterns. Yeah, and I think if you want to keep it simple, mm. if you cannot be as savvy as him, like how you use the 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 VIX and everything, I think the easiest way is you get in at support and you sell at resistance, and that's, that's the easiest, right? And and I think that's like if you graduated from OMI, you definitely know what I'm talking about. That's and that's the safest as well in terms of your profits just by doing that, even though it's more slightly more active, but it's not super active like every day you need to monitor it's like once a week you do your homework you realize that hey has it reached resistance if not i'll just wait right if it reaches then you close during the next day yeah. i think that's probably easier for for, yeah. for those who are not very savvy but then definitely it's good to improve yeah, yeah. So, uh, so for example par koopa i know sean has his his according to sean he wants to hold it for long term as me being the safe investor i have a different opinion different thought that ever can, can think about i actually think that when you use a par coupa, you should probably buy at the support, mm. you sell at the resistance, but at the same time, you don't get out of the market, you still use that mm. money to buy the S&P 500, the real shares. Mm. You, what you're doing is you're lowering your volatility, yeah. but you're also staying in the market. Yeah. That's how maybe you can not lose so much money, but yeah. that's something you can think about. Yeah, I think that's the concept of value trading, which I think is very powerful. Right? But uh, I think we don't have time to go through that. <laughs> but that's really a very good concept. When he explained to me, I was like, oh yeah, actually it makes a lot of sense. Okay, now continue. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, so yeah, so once you actually really master, this was actually taken, uh, how much, like one day ago. You know, if you know how to do T8 correctly, okay, you can actually make profits like 21% in just one day. And you, you can buy, it can be a, a call option, it can be in the money, out of the money, long call, short call, uh, selling a put option as well, in the money, out of the money, and also a long put. You can also sell a long put as well, if you know what I'm talking about, sell a long put as well. And yeah, you can, so, so, so TA, when you want to learn TA, it's all about uh, you're trying to time the bottom and trying to, to catch the bottom and trying to um, get out before the drop or lower your volatility before the drop, right? So it is possible if you know how to do, do TA correctly. So trading success is position in the right guidance. Mm. Okay, so um, okay, so this is um, this is one of the, 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 the TAs that I actually showed one of my students, my group putting students, and I, I told him, oh, I forgot, um, to buy a call option. 
and it was because of the good technical analysis and then you know within just a few days the QQQ shot up like eight percent and that's how you really really you know really really make money so it was on June 19th it was on June 19th and that was uh, on June 18th June 18th so okay. I, I said June 18th TA you look at the patterns you have to understand the patterns you look at that you buy a call option after a few days it shot up like crazy okay so so when, when people think about you know my name the safe investor they think I could I don't do a lot of crazy trading but actually I want to catch the the ultimate bottom and when you are able to catch the ultimate bottom it lowers your your risk because you spend less money and it boosts your profit as well okay so this is what I like to do right so you know that's me um, yeah so all right yeah so uh if you're wondering where to start uh stephanie uh like like maybe she has not i think she has attended omi so it could be after even after attending omi could be a little bit scary right now to invest in this volatile market i i believe that actually most importantly is really get yourself started like you have already equipped yourself with the necessary skill set right most important right now is to really start the first step if you are not comfortable doing strategy X because you think it's too volatile then maybe you can start by doing BOSS option strategy all right if you have the portfolio size right like like that that amount of money to collect 100 shares and if you still think that oh hey right now you are a little bit afraid to uh, collect 100 shares because the capital requires quite a big capital then you can just start by collecting some shares by buying some shares right away right so so when we talk about OMI it's not just about only options right because at the end of the day um, the underlying asset that we are doing options on are stocks right so if the stock is good why not buy some right and that, that's the safest way for you to start investing especially during right now in this bear market um, so many good companies are selling at a super good discount it's like you are going on a fire sale and right now like like yeah you are able to catch good companies at fire sale isn't it a better time right but for those who are completely new and you have no background no investing background at all but you do want to start learning and equipping yourself with this life skill and use options actually it's a very powerful tool right to generate income or for accelerated growth then uh, you can consider to uh, join us in our three days options millionaire intensive uh, which is like a three day online like like this we are going to become very interactive answer your questions teach you step by step and and yeah a lot of people here are also OMI graduates they have learned it most importantly make sure is you start taking action the right way right that's how you can get started as well so in the meantime uh Ken has something that it's I think quite uh very very exciting in, in fact i think it's gonna be very useful as well for some of your uh omi ex graduates or uh, our old graduates he, uh, every single year he occasionally conduct this so so one i think only once or twice a year it's right? only two times two times a two year times so a year. so he, he he's going to do once uh during during end, end of, of this year yeah. right so so i think it's gonna be quite exciting maybe you can share with what, uh, what okay, you're gonna okay. do Hey guys, so if you are all my graduate, uh, can you type OMI again? I just want to see how many people are all my graduates. This is very, very exclusive for all my graduates. Um, mm. Okay, so basically, I know, I think I think some some of you could actually be in Pete's coaching program already. Uh, some, of you, some of you might not be inside, okay? So at the end of this year, I will host a very, very exciting event, and I'll go through, and and why it's only for all my students is because if you're not in OMI, you have you will have completely no idea what I'm talking about. So you have to go and under go and attend OMI first to understand the options. So, at the, this is a, a very exclusive event. So, at the end of the year, I'll show you the revised strategy or the the OMI enhancement strategy and plus additional strategy, which is the the X and Y plus strategy. So. Um, the X strategy is evolved into the minus X strategy. The X plus strategy is X plus plus strategy. And the, uh, there's a new strategy based on the based on the old strategy. And then there's also a, a minus Y strategy um, that can actually lower your risk and actually boost your returns at the same time. And BOSS can uh, become BOSS plus strategy. Okay, so uh, it's very very exciting. Uh, last time we actually had more than hundred students. And I actually didn't attend, anticipate that many people, so my my Zoom call actually couldn't fit in more than hundred people. So I actually had to use Google uh, Google Meet at the same time because okay, so make sure you don't miss it. And how to join? Okay, so it's very very simple. 
um, you can uh, just join my telegram. So last time we really had more than 100 people join and because it's very, very exciting. So I'll give you guys the, the link. Yeah, so uh, Ken also post a lot of uh, options insights and uh, NFT insights because he also invests in different asset class as well. So uh, while waiting for him to make that year-end announcement, which he's going to share with you later on as well, but I think in between this half a year, he's going to continue to share a lot of different insights as well. So do join him and do follow him on his Telegram, t.me slash the safe investor. That's what uh, yeah he himself <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. My pride I pride myself on that. <laughs> I pride myself on being safe. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So for me, okay, if you have not joined my telegram yet, then make sure make sure do that as well. I'm the Aligato investor. Thank you everybody for also watching this webinar. That's why we thank you, right? So that's why it's Aligato investor. So Aligato. I, I also consider share a lot of things inside as well. So uh make sure you join uh, follow both of us so you will not miss out any of the future investment updates that both of us have for all of you all right so in the meantime this one okay uh the one the exclusive training that uh ken is conducting is completely free of charge you really do it out of goodwill and at the same time yeah yeah do, do join him if you want to learn more right so he's going to cover a lot more so in the meantime okay let's just uh go through go through some of the additional questions i think we have five more minutes okay so we see what uh if you have burning questions okay uh do type it in the chat right now we have five more minutes to recover it and 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 let's going to have some more fun as well okay so maybe in the meantime you can also mm. type in your your, your okay. yeah, inside the chat all right all right so let's see let me just scroll back some of the additional questions so eddie is asking i hold quite a bit of boeing and then uh, can I sell away the money in long expiration date? Sell call. Oh, can I sell call? Ah, okay. So Eddie is saying that because mm -hmm. he has a huge position, I do believe is using shares. Mm. So because he has shares, and that's why he said, can I sell long call to so-called recoup back some of the losses? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, so long call, right? Let's go. Okay, let's go back to the chart. So when you want to sell the long call, right? So guys, so remember, uh, when you sell when you sell an option, it means that when the price go above it or below it, okay, maybe they go over the strike price, you have to execute. It means that so let's say you have a hundred shares of the S and S and P five hundred, you have a hundred shares, and you sell a call at let's say because currently the price is around three three eighty, right? You sell a call at four hundred, right? then the price goes above the 400 it goes to 600 700 1000 you still have to sell it at 400 because you are the seller you're the selling you're you're, you're the seller you're selling a call so i think eddie right yeah eddie. Ed, eddie okay eddie i think it depends on okay so think about it this way use a sell call to lock in your selling price mm -hmm. and according to that selling price or strike price how long do you want it to lock it in for okay so let's say if you want to lock it in for one year or two years you sell call option at somewhere above right but then at the same time okay you can't there's actually no risk okay why there is no risk is because let's say right you the the the, the market goes all the way up right you actually don't lose money you first you make that premium and at the same time, you actually make that that margin right there. You just make less money. Okay, so if you want to sell a super long call, right? Your let's think about your. I don't know if it's a risk or not, but the only thing that you you could miss out is that super high growth. Yeah, then you can miss out on that super high growth. That's right. Yeah. And he just shared he has six thousand <coughs> shares of Boeing. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Eddie, I think your portfolio size is pretty big. So I think right now it's also good for you to. <coughs> Relook into your portfolio like is this Boeing occupying a huge percentage of your portfolio if it is then I think maybe you will get quite affected because uh, if, when the share price drop your whole portfolio can also be heavily affected so I think you should actually ask yourself would, can, could it be a good time for you to reconsider how to allocate your portfolio better uh, but since you have 6,000 shares uh, you can I mean like <laughs> all right there, okay let, let me there is something that you could do but don't do it if you don't understand okay so well number one you have to understand 
is it still a good company or yeah. you, you, you yeah, want I think to that's the most term? important question. Is it a good company? Go back to do evaluation and then third place. There's something that you could do. Okay, I'm gonna explain. If you don't understand it, don't do it. So six thousand shares, right? One call option is a hundred shares. Mm. You can you can actually sell away all your six thousand shares. You lock in the current price with sixty call options, and then you freed up a lot of capital, mm. right? You buy That's the true. longest call option. You freed up so many capital that capital you can do something else with it. Yeah, uh, this is value trading that he also shared in his group coaching as well, which I think is useful, but then it also takes a lot of guts to do that. <laughs> yeah. So so basically he's saying that uh, you're basically using the same amount of uh, options relevant to your, to your number of shares, you free up the cash. Actually, once again, it's back to my question back to you as, as if your portfolio, it's too heavily invested in one company, I'm not sure it is. Is it the case, right? If it is, then maybe it's time for you to relook into how can you restructure a portfolio better so that it's not something that causing you to be uneasy despite of the drop in share price. So you need to ask yourself firstly, do you have a do you have conviction in Boeing? Right? And secondly, it's what is the price that you bought? And then do you want to consider reallocate some of it into other good businesses where a lot of them are selling at discount right now? Right? So another pe- person is asking, maybe we just answer one last question. Okay. All right. So for beginners, is it recommended to invest in stocks than options? What's your take on that? Okay. So options is very, very powerful. Okay. If you understand, you have to fully understand what does the buy call mean? Full understand what does the buy put mean? What does the sell call mean? What does a sell short mean? Uh, uh, sell put mean? Understand it, super powerful. If you don't understand it, buy stocks. <laughs> <laughs> so basically just invest in something that you understand. But I personally think that if you are a complete beginner, uh, also depends on your age, right? Let's say if you are somebody who <coughs> probably just started working, like for example, my sister, like she just only started working, her, her portfolio size may not be very big. And, and that's why I teach her to start investing using shares first because at least she gets started, right? But over time as her, her income, right, savings start to increase, uh, I would highly encourage her to start doing options because options definitely provide you more flexibility. You can generate income, you can even have higher growth as well. So, so you need to ask yourself, are you somebody who have you know, limited budget size? If you have limited budget size, maybe it's good to start with stock. But then, of course, stock is slower, right? So you need to have a longer runway. But that's why I highly, still highly uh, suggest and recommend people to really learn about options first and then see for yourself is it something that you really want to uh, uh, work on, right? And, and just like what Ken said, you need to master it. But and once you master it, you know that it's super powerful. Yeah, just yeah. Like, let's say, I mean, the good thing about learning options first is like you learn the most powerful tool mm. ever. And then let's say after one year you give up, you go back to buying stocks. <laughs> <laughs> because you, you already learned to master the, the most powerful tool, right? For example, you, know, you want to buy 100 shares of Right, Apple right now, you don't have that $14,000. You buy one call option, you lock in the buying price, then you make money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So I think, uh, yeah, it's almost time. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in into our special webinar. How many of you felt that it has been useful for you? If it's useful, can you type you in the chat? All right. Let us know. In the meantime, all right. Thank you so much for coming into uh, this special webinar. In fact, it's also the first time that we held this on Be Rich, and I think that it's it's a, it's really great. I I think that the time of respond time of uh, I think it's really fast. It's pretty good. It's yeah. really fast. I was like, wow, like immediately, like within like five seconds or so, I, I see all your comments. I think it's great. So make sure you continue to uh, log into the app, use it because there are a lot of different other features as well. There's also some free courses and some other KOLs, like key opinion leaders sharing their views on different market news as well. Uh, log into the app, use it, and test out for yourself whether it is something that you like and you find it useful, right? In the meantime, do join our Telegram as well. Okay, let me just share our Telegram one more time, all right, so that you can, uh, oh, oops, 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 okay, both of, uh, all, you can join both of our Telegram for to stay tuned for more updates uh, because we constantly have a lot of different updates. Okay, let me just, am I, am I sharing screen right now? Uh, 
Uh, it's a black no. screen, so it's a black screen. So yeah, oh yeah, it's there. back. Yeah, there okay, so this is the safe investor t.me slash the safe investor. That's Ken's Telegram channel, and then for me is Aligato Investor uh, t.me slash Aligato Investor. Aligato. Yeah, so join both of us, and we will have a lot of amazing updates along the way as well. So also stay tuned for Ken's year end special bonus segment just for OMI grads. Right, you're gonna learn a lot as well. So yes, okay. Definitely, all right. So definitely, the the app uh has ways to for improvement as well because I think this app is relatively new. But if you give it more time, uh, use it, and in the meantime, I think this app is definitely going to improve as well. So it's also the first time both of us trying out. Uh, and I think so far so good. So definitely, there are ways for improvement. Everybody are here to improve as well. So you just keep on learning, keep on testing and learning, and that is the best. All right. So with that, okay, we will see you guys during the next sharing session uh yeah just stay tuned in our telegram channel i think we have a lot more things we will be uh doing along the second half of the year it's gonna be super fun and can't wait to really have an amazing amazing uh 2022 together with all of you all right so see you guys Arigato. next time Bye -bye. Arigato Arigato. <laughs> oh my god we end like japanese <laughs> Bye -bye. Bye -bye. okay okay